it was such a blessing this morning to uh, try to sing Jesus keep me near the cross. Amen. Uh, it's a wonderful song. It's a wonderful thought. You know, that should be our prayer today is that Jesus would keep us near the cross and that uh, we might uh, learn more of him through his word. We want to study this morning a little bit in the book of John in uh, chapter 8. We've got a scripture we'd like to read to you and make a few comments on. <clears throat> John 8, 51. Uh, as Jesus was talking to them, he ended this up. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse 40. I'll just read all of this and then we can make a comment on it. But, Jesus said in verse 49, I have not a devil. And that, this was Jesus answering them because they had accused him of having a devil. But I honor my father, and you do honor me. Uh, and you do, and you do honor me. But I honor my father, and you do honor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Bear it, and then here's the scripture. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Amen. Now, it don't. It's not saying that he will never uh, die, because we know that from Adam and Eve all have died up to this day. Mm -hmm. But he's saying here this. If a man keep my saying, if he lives, if he lives as I teach, and as he's and he's been called, and he's been saved, that he'll never see death. Now, death is a thing that is just like the devil. It's a, it's a thing because the Bible speaks of the sting of death, and it's a thing that man fears because it's an unknown. But here. We have this assurance this morning that we'll never see death. Now, the death that I believe that he is trying, or that Jesus is speaking about this morning, is an everlasting death in hell. Mm -hmm. And we this morning that are saved, we this morning that uh, know for sure that we're saved, even though we sometimes will, 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 we will fear the sting of death because Jesus I believe he dreaded it he, he asked the Lord if it would be possible that that cup would pass from him and, and I don't know if he was talking about the death as much as he was something else but anyway I believe there was there was still because he was in his human flesh but the thing of it is we may fear it listen we may fear that death that sting of it but listen we'll never see it now this death that he's talking about is none other than hell itself. Because if you'll notice over, and I'll read it later on, but it speaks of death and hell being cast into the lake of fire. Amen. And so we know where hell is at. We, 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 we don't uh, uh, have no, no way of directing to it or not, but we, we believe that it is in the core of the earth and we believe this morning that there is where all of the lost are this morning. Amen. And they are suffering in soul. Now their body is still in the ground. And our bodies, when we die, that's where they're going to stay until such time as the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and calls us that are dead and are buried calls our bodies out because our soul is already with Christ after we die because the Bible says to be absent from this body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so our spirit <clears throat> will go back to the one that gave it. Our body will go back to the dust from where it come. Then when the rapture takes place and Jesus Christ cries out come up hither that body that's in the ground that was rotted it shall take on another form 
and it will go up to meet the, the Father in the air. The Father, will, uh, Jesus will never touch the ground, but it will go to meet Him. He will carry that body to where the soul is at, and they will unite. And I, I'm assuming that He, uh, I believe the Bible says, and He will bring those, bring those, those souls with Him, and they will unite. And there we will ever be with the Lord. Amen. So this is this is what is he's talking about here when he's saying, if a man keep my sayings. And people this morning just assures this world, if one is out is out in this world and he is lost, listen, he is, his body will not come forth with the bodies of those that are saved. It will lay there for years and then when the white throne judgment the judgment for the lost is prepared then that body will come forth already the the bodies of those that have been saved have already gone mm -hmm. but listen people these these bodies are going to come out of that ground they're going to they're going to come back out and take on a form and probably be like this old fleshly uh, filthy flesh that we have because the thing of this, this body, that body that comes forth from a lost is going to unite back with that soul that is in hell and then it's going to stand before God and be judged not to see whether it's going but to see what the punishment is going to be Amen. and then when, when death and hell is cast into the lake of fire, there goes the lost mm -hmm. with them. So this is this is the truth of God's word. This is what that that you that are out there watching, uh, wherever you may be, if you if you don't understand it, you need to get you a, a, a King James version Bible and and study it and get uh, in a church where that you can get be taught the truth. And I'm 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 saying this to you out there that that you don't need to just anything that's got church over the name over the building is a church you need to find out where that you need to go and get this word because listen you're in danger mm -hmm. of hell far and that's the reason why this morning that we have the ability to transfer to other other places out in the world and they can hear it and this morning it's uh, it's to you and it's to us here this morning that we need to understand what is fit what will take place with our souls and bodies when we draw our last breath now we're going to all die or Amen. we're going to all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye according to god's word and so this morning we all hope for that are saved for the rapture that way we can beat the sting of death but the thing of it is we don't know but this morning i would that you Turn with me this morning, just a minute, and over to chapter 5, and I want to read something to you this morning. John 5, 24. <laughs> Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. Amen. Now, when we say everlasting life, it don't mean that this body is not going to die. But it means that this spirit that is within us, our souls, will never die. It is, it is when it, God blew the breath of life into Adam, that was an everlasting thing. And we have received it through uh, the generations of, of Adam and Eve and on, on down. So we have an everlasting thing living within us Amen. in this body. And this body is just the temple uh, of the Holy Spirit. And our souls are alive in there. And they were born lost because they inherited it from Adam and Eve. But now there is a way that Jesus has made that we can we can this soul can be saved. It can be out of the clutches of hell. And he says this is what he's talking about. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Amen. Now this everlasting life is not is not death. 
but it is the opposite of death. Death and, and is, is hell, and we read over there about uh, not dying. And so we that are saved have an everlasting life, have an everlasting soul within us that will never taste death. Amen. And you say, well, what about those that are... That's the body. The body dies, but the soul does not die. So notice here. <clears throat> and, shall not come in, and shall not come into condemnation. It won't be condemned. Uh, but is passed from death unto life. Now how is this passing from death unto life happening? Well, when a person is saved, when God calls them to Himself, listen, that, that sin of unbelief, that blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary, covers that soul and takes away that sin, or, and that God cannot see that sin. And this is what he is talking about here when he says here, uh, uh, has passed from, uh, the hours come, uh, the, and they, let, me, let, me get, let me get it right now. I want I to I make this right. And shall not come in contention, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. That's, that is the procedure that a soul has to have in order to pass from death unto life. Now this 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 death he is talking about he if he's not if he's never been saved, he's gonna wind up in hell. Mm -hmm. His soul and body will wind up in hell to be there to be there. Mm -hmm. You can't say throughout eternity because eternity don't have no end. And so he, he's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. And there's no escape there's no way of him getting any relief. There's no, there's no mama there to pat him on the back and say, you're a good son. There's no one there that loves him. There's no one that cares about him. All you have is, is sin there and punishment. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's, it's just, that's the way it's going to be for you because you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But we that have been saved, we that are passed from death unto life, because we were called of the, of, the, of the Lord and that we have served Him, we will be with Him in eternal bliss. Throughout, throughout ages and ages, it will never end. We will be there with Him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and with our uh, uh, loved ones. And, and I, I have no idea how, how close we're going to be to the loved ones because... Jesus Christ is our Savior. Jesus Christ is the one that we we'll want to see. Amen. Jesus Christ is the one that we we'll want to worship and to kneel down and to touch and to and to praise Him throughout the ages. Because listen, He is the one that made it possible for us to go there. Amen. It, it, it's it, it, it's a terrible thing to think about any soul. I don't care if it's a man that has committed the worst of worst of worst. You say, well, he deserves it. No. Listen, I can't say that any man deserves it. Because, but the thing of it is, God made it possible for him to escape. And he did, he chose not to, or God didn't want him. And so, there, there's going to be, and, and the thing of it is, it's going to be full. It's the, the hell is going to be full because the Bible says that hell has enlarged itself. And so it's making more room all the time for lost souls to go there. And so here he says in verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall, and they that hear shall live. Now Amen. the dead that he's talking about is those that are lost. It's not talking about the ones dead ones that are in hell and they're going to be brought out. Listen, people, that's a teaching. That's a teaching of the devil. Uh, you cannot escape hell. I don't. I don't. There's no. There's no. There's no Bible for it. There's no reason for it. Listen, and they teach it that that that, that churches have people in them that can pray a soul out of hell. Don't listen to it Amen. because it's, it's false. 
There's, there's, if, if they can, if they can give me Bible and Scripture for it, I'd like to see it because that it's not in the, our Bible. And if, right. they've got, if they've got anything besides what I've got here, they've got a false doctrine. They've got a false teaching. They've got a false Bible, but a book. And so he says here, uh, uh, in verse 26, for as the Father hath life in Himself, so hath He given to the Son. To have life in himself and hath in verse 27 and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man and that is the one this morning that died on the cross of Calvary Amen. for you and I and he is the son of God and people this morning so many people rejects him so many people don't believe it so many people and even even at this time when he was dying is this country rejecting him? Mm -hmm. And uh, they 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 spit on him. They they called him everything. They pulled his beard. They even pierced his side. And 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 these things and showing that they had no respect for the Son of God. But this morning, we as God's people can tell others about the Son of God. That may be may be that God would have mercy on their Man. soul and, and call them unto Him. <coughs> now, here this morning, He says in verse uh, 28, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear His voice. Now, that that is this old fleshly body that we have that will hear His voice. And this old body may, may have laid there for 6,000 years and there's nothing left. Not even a bone, not even a sliver of a bone. But the thing is that God's Word says, they will hear His voice. And it's the same, it's the same way that when God made Adam, He made him out of the dirt of the, of the ground and He blowed of the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. That's the same thing that's going to happen again, only God won't, they don't say that God will do that, but he will, he will, he will speak to that, that pile of dirt. He will call that pile of dirt out. And that, that will, will come out of that ground as a glorified body. One that is pure, nothing wrong with it. One that can go to heaven. And that one that has sinned and is lost will lay right there beside of him. And he'll lay there for a thousand years. And then one day, God will call him out. But he won't call him out as a glorified body. He'll call him out as one to stand in judgment to see how much punishment he, can, he will have at the white throne judgment. And so these, this, this, is, this is what he's talking about here. Now, notice here. Is in verse 29, and in in the well in Mer, uh, uh, yeah 29, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Now don't get this good mixed up, and don't let this good rub off by somebody telling you, "Oh, you're a good person. You're a good person." Well, listen, that is a that is a that is a, a, a thing from the devil because listen God said or Jesus said there's none good except the Father but the thing that the point he's saying here is that, that, that they have lived according to what his law has, has, has done what he what they have what he has, his word has taught and so here uh, so many people so many people want to take this fleshly body and say that it has done good works it has went down here and visited the poor it has went here and and uh, helped so and so it has got out and, and visited and, and listen that is good works but people that does not get you saved man and listen that is a a a, a sign of a saved person it's just like they teach you that you need to be baptized in order to be saved. No, baptism is not for salvation. Amen. Baptism is because of salvation. It's an identification saying that you have been 
saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, 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 a, it's an identification. It's the same way when Jesus came to uh, 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 Moses and uh, came to uh, John the Baptist and said that he needed to be saved. Well, can we say that Jesus needed anything for his salvation? No, he was a perfect Man. person. But the thing of it was, this baptism was to identify him as the Son of God. And this baptism that you have uh, when you're saved is just to, to show to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so, people, there's nothing, there's no, nothing to do as far with, I mean, with baptism and salvation. One, one, salvation is by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, and, and baptism is, be, is to show to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And it's the same way with these good works. These good works are good. But listen, they're not for salvation. They're Amen. not for keeping your salvation. They're, they have nothing to do with keeping it. But the thing of it is, it's a, it's a fruit of salvation. It is a it is a show to the world. And, and most of the people that do it don't do it because they sh their salvation. They show it to get the pats on the back of people. And that's, it's a sad thing, but that's what's going on. But the thing, if a person does something from the heart because he loves the person, even going and testifying to him, listen, that is a fruit of the Spirit. That is a good work. And listen, that is pleasing to God. Amen. But, but, but this here uh, good work, uh, is, it, it, it is because of salvation. So notice here he says, here, uh, uh, and in verse 29, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the south of a damnation. Now we can look over in the book of Revelations, and we can see something here about the the, the uh, two resurrections. There's going to be two resurrections. A lot of churches will teach you that there's a general resurrection, and all will stand before God, and he and he'll he'll divide them as sheep from the goats. Well, listen, that's not, that's, it says that, but it's not for that. It's for the nation judgment. This is a judgment to see how many, how much punishment they will receive in hell and in, and in, in the lake of fire. And, but, but here, he says here, the resurrection of the life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing as I fear. I judge and my judgment is just. Because I have, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Now, we want to get over just a little bit more here in, in the book of First Thessalonians. If you would, we can be turning there to First Four, First Thessalonians Four. I'll find it in a minute. I have it marked somewhere here, I think. Uh, let's see. While we're while, while I'm here, let me let me show you something in Revelation. Uh, if, you, if you bear with me just a minute. In uh, uh, yeah, and and re turn to Revelation 20 while I'm here. Then we'll get back to First Thessalonians. But First Thessalonians, uh, Revelation 20. And I've I've been telling you about this white throne judgment. Uh, notice. Uh, let me look at, look at verse 9 of, of chapter 20. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now this is when they go against Israel. This is the devil. He's, he's, been, he's been turned loose from hell and he has got his army together and he's come against Israel. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah. And, 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 and where, where, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now notice. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whence, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Amen. Now people, that's the lost. There was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, books, the Bible, were open, and another book, the book of life, was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Amen. See here, the works that they did. Those that have committed these murders, raped these children, and done these ungodly things, listen, their punishment is going to be much more than some that just, just didn't know any better and, and was never saved. That punishment is going to be more because notice he says, uh, the dead were judged out of the thought, out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The first death is when they hit hell, and they're brought out. And then they're thrown into hell and into the lake of fire. It's the second death. And people, what a terrible thing it is this morning to think about something like that. Now, I wanted to try to read something in here in First Thessalonians if I could possibly find it uh, without too much trouble having, having to wait. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. <coughs> but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now here is, here is, here is a thing here. If we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, if we believe in the resurrection, Listen, that's a must, people. In, in a Christian's life, he has got to accept the fact that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and died and was buried or was laid in a tomb for three days and was resurrected and, and, and ascended to the Father and he started making intercession. Amen. That is a must. That is the only way that we can ever we can ever have salvation because in the death of Jesus Christ, as he hung on the cross, he shed his blood, and his blood is a remission for our sins. So we have got to we have got to accept the fact that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and was resurrected. Because that is that is that that that's, that was it. And so he said here, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, that is the rapture, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That is the ones that have been dead for years and hundreds and hundreds of years that were saved by grace, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and the grace of God. And he says they are going to rise first. We're not going to prevent them. And, the, and, the, and, and, the, and, and then we which are alive. Amen and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, Amen. people, this ought to be this ought to be a comfort to me. Amen. If you believe that Jesus Christ, and I know this morning with this old fleshly mind, you can't believe it. Because it's 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 something that it's something that is extraordinary, and but the thing of this, with your spirit, you believe that Jesus Christ, you have that assurance that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and died there and was put in the ground and three days later resurrected. Amen. It, it, that's it. And, it and, and so 
This is what this is what we're this is what we're concerned about this morning is is people people say, Yeah, I've been saved. I've been I, have you been saved? Oh yeah, I was baptized down there at the creek twenty years ago. Listen. They're dependent on baptism. Mm -hmm. They oh yeah, I, I go to, I go to church every Sunday. I put my tithe in that box. I help so and so out every time I get you. They're dependent on works. Mm -hmm. Ephesians says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. But of the grace of God, you're saved. And so that, that that eliminates anything except this true belief in the Lord Jesus Christ that He is a Savior. He's the one. This morning, I I I, I, I you know, and He says here, First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15. Let's go back over here. First Corinthians 15. And I'm sure, I'm sure, and I'm sure. And you say, well, I've heard this. I've heard this. Well, we may be talking to somebody this morning who heard that. Hey, First Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren. Are you there? First Corinthians 15, 50. <clears throat> now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Right. So there's nothing about us this morning, as we can see, <coughs> that is going to inherit the kingdom of God. But we are a temple, the Bible says, and that spirit that God has saved, or that spirit that's not been saved, is dwelling in this old temple. And listen, one day, this body, this temple is going to lay down and die, and that spirit is going to go back. And... It's going to either go to the one that gave it the, the, to God to, the, to, to be in heaven and wait for its body or it's going to go to hell and then it's going to be brought out and put back with its old fleshly body. So he says flesh and blood cannot inherit. And so by that this morning we don't we don't we don't depend upon this flesh Amen. because it's sinful and you say oh no my flesh yes your flesh is sinful right it's never been born again it's never been saved from the Adam nature that that he experienced it's never been changed it's still it's still dirty if you want to say it that way it's still it's still sinful and it will be sinful as long as it's alive it's going to sin and it's until it dies and lays down there and rots away, will it ever have a change made in it? And those that are, those that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, it, it's all going to be the same with them. So, here, he says here, in verse uh, 50, Brethren, this I say, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption and do you see what he's saying this body cannot inherit heaven because this is corruption inheriting incorruption it can't do it it can't it, it's impossible for any sin whatsoever to go to be with the lord in heaven and 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 you know when all is said and done Hell and death is cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Then this world will be without sin. Then and the, only then will it be a perfect world. It will be a place where that, uh, uh, that the, I believe the saved will be. I believe that God will, will rule in his, in his place. But the world will be a perfect place uh, once more. And, and we can we we will be here. I believe this will be our this will be our new home. This will be our mm -hmm. kingdom. Amen. And this is where we'll be. But it will be all together a different place. It will be all together a different place. So here again, he says, "Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye." At the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, this old dirtiness, 
must put on incorruption, purity. And this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. Everlasting. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the law, Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. That should encourage you this morning, you that were out there in the hot sun this past weekend trying to be a witness for other. Listen. It's, it's not forgotten. God will not forget it. It, it. It's not done in vain. And it will, it will, it will be something to come out of it. Amen. If nothing else, the churches around will be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And so that's our lesson this morning. And we, we thank you for listening to us. And I hope that this will, will help uh, some that are maybe... Uh, not as sure about what's, what's going on as it should be and, and it'll help them strengthen them. And for those that are out there listening on YouTube or wherever, I pray that you'll, you'll listen to it, that you'll take heed and that you'll find your good Bible, a King James Version, and start trying to study it. Amen. Because uh, the time is short and it might be tomorrow, it might be today. Thank God. Mm -hmm.